1451, the French armies of King Charles VII of France captured the city of Bordeaux. The Hundred Years' War between England and France appeared to be at an end. By this point in the war, the English primarily focused on reinforcing their only remaining possession, Calais, and watching over the seas. After 300 years of English rule, the citizens of Bordeaux considered themselves subjects of the English monarch and sent messengers to Henry VI of England, demanding that he recapture the province. On the 17th of October 1452, John Talbot, the Earl of Shrewsbury, landed near Bordeaux with a force of 3,000 English soldiers. John Talbot was a feared and famous military leader. With the cooperation of the townspeople, Talbot easily took the city of Bordeaux on the 23rd of October. The English then took control over most of Western Gascony by the end of the year. The French had known an English expedition was coming, but had expected it to come through Normandy. After this surprise, King Charles prepared his forces over the winter, and by early 1453 he was ready to counterattack. King Charles invaded the newly English-ruled region of France with three separate armies, all headed for Bordeaux. In total, around 10,000 French soldiers marched to war. The French eventually laid siege to Castillon. This was a small castle that was located approximately 40 kilometers east of Bordeaux on the 8th of July. The French army was commanded by King Charles' ordnance officer, Jean Bureau, who laid out the camp to maximize French artillery strength. In a defensive setup, Bureau's forces built an artillery park out of range from Castillon's guns. The park included many guns of various sizes. The men in charge of Castillon managed to send out messengers through the siege to bring news to the English that the French were near. Meanwhile, Talbot received 3,000 additional men, reinforcements led by his fourth and favorite son, John, the Viscount Lille. It was at this point when Talbot received the messages from the town leaders of Castillon. He abandoned his original plan to wait at Bordeaux for more reinforcements and set out to relieve the garrison. Talbot left Bordeaux on the 16th of July. While John Talbot marched to meet the French, he outdistanced a majority of his forces, arriving at Libourne with only 500 men-at-arms and 800 archers, while the rest of the army was still catching up. The following day, the English attacked a small detachment of French archers who were stationed nearby. The English heavy armor protected them from the arrow fire of the French as they advanced. Not having any infantry support, the English easily defeated this small force of French archers. Despite earlier plans to wait for reinforcements, Talbot, who was now overconfident after his victory, pressed his men onward to the French camp near Castillon, believing the rest of his men would arrive soon. On the 17th of July, Talbot's force arrived at the French camp. Talbot had roughly 2,000 men with him by this point, and the rest of the English army, which was now close behind, consisted of roughly 5,000 men. Despite not having many troops with him,
Talbot pushed forward because of reports that the French were retreating. He wanted to attack while he thought the French were disorganized. The English, however, were unaware of the full extent of the French preparations. The French force of around 8,000 men was well prepared and ready for the English advance. As the English advanced, they were met with a devastating barrage of artillery fire. The French cannons, strategically placed and expertly managed, tore through the English ranks. The cannon fire created chaos and confusion among the English soldiers, disrupting their formations and making it nearly impossible for them to mount an effective assault. Talbot, recognizing the peril but determined to press on, had dismounted and led his men into the thick of the battle. It is suggested that this seemingly reckless behavior from Talbot may be due to the fact that his pride and honor were at stake, for he had already ordered his men to battle before he discovered the strength of the French position. Despite the odds against the English, they managed to reach the French lines. As the English assault began to falter, the French saw an opportunity to launch a counter-attack. French cavalry, previously held in reserve, now charged out of the camp and attacked the disorganized English forces. This sudden and well-timed assault further demoralized the English troops who were already wavering from the artillery bombardment. The combination of artillery and cavalry proved overwhelming. Talbot, who had dismounted to fight alongside his men, was caught in the thick of the fighting. Despite his best efforts to rally his troops, he was killed in the melee. The remaining English forces quickly disintegrated under the pressure of the French attack. This was one of the first instances in European warfare where artillery played a decisive role in determining the outcome of a battle. By the time the main English force arrived, the battle was effectively over. The advance force had been decimated By the end of the battle, around 2,000 English soldiers lay dead. The French casualties were much lower, maybe a few hundred at most. The main English force, upon reaching the battlefield and seeing the extent of the defeat, did not engage in combat during the battle. The main English force surrendered the next day, 
and the men were taken prisoner. The day after the battle, the French bombarded Castillon with their artillery and the defenders surrendered on the 19th of July, becoming prisoners of war. With Talbot's death and the destruction of his army, English authority in Gascony eroded and the French retook Bordeaux on the 19th of October. This battle was the end point of the 100-year war between England and France, the longest ongoing conflict in English history. The English crown lost all its continental possessions except for the Pale of Calais, which was the last English possession in mainland France and the Channel Islands. Calais was lost in 1558. The Channel Islands have remained British crown dependencies to the present day.